when someone engages in something that is transformative, is an emotional process. You're transforming the way you handle money. You're transforming uh, your uh, uh, your body. You're going through weight loss or working out or getting ready for a marathon or you are transforming a marriage from a bad situation to a good situation, transforming your parenting skills or whatever. It, it always feels like, as a lay person that doesn't know what he's talking about, that getting through the first 10 percent takes more or 20 percent takes more energy mm. than the rest of the 80 percent like he talked about he had to kind of muscle through it for a little while and then they found their groove yep I, I had a friend that used to say the hardest run of the day was from his couch to the front door if i could just get to the front door then i can go run my five miles yeah but it's just getting up and getting out there yeah there's something about changing behaviors that are wired into us there's something about changing thought patterns that just are so default and so normed in our life that it just it's hard to set that dial back and once you get that thing set back as he mentioned once you go from a math problem to a visioning gift right once you go from solving a problem to a new way of living towards something it just changes everything yeah. psychologically speaking yeah if you've been doing something wrong to reset and get your default to not be because uh, your default is comfortable but it's wrong that's right and to change your default to a, a the nat- the natural go-to the, is the right thing mm-hmm. that requires just tremendous energy it does and it's some, hard and sometimes it's you got to go all the way back and look where you're wired that's what rachel's book's coming out it's talking about where your where your history is which is so good rachel cruz and some folks are just blessed with an ability to say, no more, I'm moving forward. And I envy those people personally. Um, I know one or two of them that just stop smoking. I'm just, I'm done with it. I'm going to move on. The majority of us have to go find out where those behaviors are from and really get someone to walk alongside us. Why this thing's a math problem. Well, it turns those automatic behaviors into going towards something. Yeah. Why is it that when that happens, I'm angry? Yep. And why if, is it? What is it that does that? What's that? I mean, what's what's my brain protecting me from? What's my heart trying to protect me from? Why is anger my tool to go to? Mm-hmm. And some people go to curling up in a ball, and some people go and go to yelling, and just stopping and asking yourself, "What am I trying to defend myself from?" Yeah. What's what? What is this reminding me of? There you go. Or, or yeah. You know, and there's got to be something that's uh, is a real because when people say they change their lives, at walking through the stuff we're talking about, all we're doing is talking about money. I mean, we're talking about credit cards and mutual funds. Mm. So why is that so life-changing? It's because it's behavior change. It's 80% behavior. It's only 20% math. Hmm. And, and so what you're really having to do is really rewire your dadgum brain. Hmm. And it just, it's hard. It's real hard. And I think those things pop up 10 years later, 20 years later. You'll see them come up. You'll meet somebody. You'll get in a situation that somehow there's a, there's that great book by Bessel van der Kolk called The Body Keeps the Score. You'll Your body will respond to something 10 years later, 15 years later. That happened to me last night. I ordered an extra app. We went out with another couple for dinner, Sharon and I. And I got this huge, massive seafood appetizer for the whole table mm-hmm. just because I wanted it. Right. And Sharon's like, what'd you do that for? Right. And her whole body changed. I'm like, you're not broke, woman. We can afford a freaking appetizer. But huh. she's like, you, you know, there's a Dave's wasting money hmm. from 40 years ago thing. Comes out every once in a while. And it's like, <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's just yeah. Jumped across the table, stole my raw, raw oysters. Is what it did, you know. <laughs> but it's like, oh man, I can't even enjoy a freaking appetizer. But yeah, it, that's. But it, it, I've watched it physically activate in her. <laughs> so I had a situation uh, a couple of weeks ago that I talked about on this new show where I got to work on time. And if you if you don't know, working for Dave Ramsey, one of the cornerstones is you will be here on time. I got here a little bit early because I'm usually rushing around. It was a staff meeting. I walk in the door and my wife calls. And we just have this, we moved to this new place out in the woods. And she calls and says, please go check in your truck and see if my keys are in there. And my son had gone to get something out of my truck and had left her keys. And my show started filming exactly one hour. It's 30 minutes there. And I got instantly angry. I'm going to teach that kid. And then I had to on my walk back to the parking lot. I remember having to think, why am I why why am I so mad? 
because something happened that I can't control. And by the time I got home, I was laughing. I hugged him and said, we're going to talk about this tonight. And I was able to address him in a way that a 10-year-old can hear it, right? If you lose your keys again, you have to ride on the tube behind Mr. Davis' boat again. <laughs> again. He was completely <laughs> traumatized. <laughs> yeah. He's still, still, He's still traumatized. Up water. That's yeah, right. He's still traumatized. That's right. <laughs>